I have the best type of lighting, natural lighting. Hello everyone, my name is Akona and today I'm going to be going through five things that all beginning editors need to know. Firstly, organisation is key. You need to have specific folders for specific things and if not, your life is going to become hell. Your workflow is going to be non-existent and you're just going to have a really tough time trying to bring things together. You need folders to be able to classify different types of videos. For example, if you're doing a type of documentary project and if you're doing a comedy skit type of project, you need those different video files to be in different folders to be able to pick out and know which one is where. And if not, you're going to end up with something that looks like David Attenborough narrating over the Chuckle Brothers. So yeah, you need to have your raw video files in one folder, your music in another, your sound effects in another, maybe different transitions that you like to use in another. So keep everything laid out nice and neatly. Otherwise, you're going to have a tough time. Number two, audio is crucial. Now it's all well and good having this expensive camera and very nice video and lighting and everything. But then again, the other half of it is sound. Sound adds a very unique dynamic to your video. You need to have sound effects, even if they're not from the clip itself, you can download sound effects which sound similar, but they give a really nice dynamic feel to the video. And it's sort of the other half. So if you have really nice cinematics, but they don't match up with really high quality sound, then it's not going to feel as immersive and it's going to be quite bland and boring like if you're walking through a forest and all you've got is this uh, travel filmy vlog type music in the background it might be okay but if you have a cricket sound and if you have the leaves rustling in the wind sometimes and if you're zooming in on the footsteps you have the sound of the feet on the ground then it's going to add a lot more immersion and it's just going to be overall much better number three learn shortcuts now this is really important and it can massively reduce your editing time so when i was starting out with youtube i used to use windows movie maker which is a good basic editor i know it's made fun of in the editing community but still it's a good solid base to work on for beginners then I moved on to Sony Vegas Pro and that was all right it wasn't a very steep learning curve so it was good to get the basics of video editing but at a higher level than Windows Movie Maker then when I went on to Adobe Premiere Pro a few years later I discovered that I could increase my workflow efficiency way more by using all of these shortcuts that I found and they really helped me. So that's another thing to greatly improve your workflow. And another bonus tip on that is to learn shortcuts for different programs because you're not just going to be using Premiere Pro the whole time. You're not just going to be using Sony Vegas the whole time. You're going to need to expand into different programs. So maybe you'll need to use After Effects for a certain transition. You need to know the keyboard shortcuts for those as well. So you need to have a wide range and variety of shortcuts for different programs and who knows which ones you may need in your future life and career. Number four, you don't need the best equipment. Now I've had a lot of experience with not very good equipment as I said Windows Movie Maker and I've tried to make vlog type uh, films and stuff and I haven't had the greatest equipment. Uh, right now I'm filming on a Logitech C920 webcam which is piled up on a stack of books on my windowsill so I don't need a tripod even though I've got one here. So what I mean by this is pretty obvious. You don't need to have the most expensive camera to have nice visuals. You can get, surprisingly, quite a lot of cameras for quite a cheap price. You do need to do quite a bit of research, but you can get really good deals. For example, 1080p with this webcam, which only costs £60, and that might seem like a lot, but compared to other cameras, which can cost thousands, £60 for 1080p is actually a very good deal. And for when I go outside, I use this camera here. My... Sony DSC HX60 and uh, wait is it if I messed up the model of this camera after I've had it for like two years HS50 damn it so right now I use the Sony DSC HX50 when I go outside and um, it does the job it does 1080p in 30 frames per second and I would have really preferred it to do 60 frames per second but uh, it does the job and that's the thing you don't need to have really high-end cameras high-end lighting this tip expands to filming as well not just editing uh, as you can tell so yeah this camera uh, I'm not recommending you get it because it would be more worthy to invest in something that does do 60 FPS but for now this works for me I am saving up for a Sony a6000 which won't be coming for another few years unfortunately but I'm gonna make the best with what I have which is a stack of books a webcam and a cheap camera for example, to get steady shots, people might think that you need um, image stabilization in the camera and the gimbal 
and all of these things but really you can have a camera as basic as mine a simple sony point and shoot and you can do everything in post you can add a warp stabilizer you can slow down the speed so equipment isn't everything remember that number five the most important one and i know you're going to be sick of hearing this if you've been looking around tips for a while but practice 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 okay i have been doing youtube and editing videos for four years and yes I'm only 14 but I do have quite a lot of experience in practicing editing I might not be the best editor in the world I'm definitely not but I've had practice I'm always trying to improve my skills and expand my variety with different styles of editing so you need to explore and learn of your own accord maybe watch videos tutorials they're really good points to start off with and practicing doesn't always have to be going outside to this incredible beautiful landscape and filming there you can download stock footage practice with that you can just practice filming stuff around the house and edit that. Uh, you could make a really cinematic film of, I don't know, your cat and you can practice colour grading and everything. You don't need to go to Hawaii to be the next Sam Calder. You can you can just explore your creative options right here. So those are the five tips from me. I know I rambled on a lot about a lot of stuff, but I'm really passionate about editing and filmmaking in general, as well as photography. So I really like talking about this stuff and I feel like I can open up and share information with you, share knowledge with you in the comments as well. So yeah, this is a really good chance for me to just talk about stuff that I wanna talk about. So yeah, that's the experience that I took and thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Also, I will pin your comment if you can count how many Rubik's Cubes are up there behind me on my bookshelf.